let's uh, let's look at some actual uh, attributes now. Um, and we've actually seen uh, if you if you've looked at the error messages um, all this time, you might have seen them because uh, you know uh, an attribute is uh, has it follows this format. And uh, if you do something like uh, let's see, just abstract. You know, let's put this together. So uh, we're not going to use it, and then we'll say uh, some char equals nine, and uh, you know we're not doing anything with it. So uh, we'll run it, and then Rust is going to say, you know, this is fine, uh, runs wonderfully this program. Uh, but you, uh, by the way, uh, did you want to use this? Uh, did you want to use this? And you know, it reminds us that uh, that we didn't do it. And this is where uh, you can see the. Uh, this attribute and it says hey this attribute is on by default so rest is a uh, and this one as well it's slightly different so uh, from rest point of view uh, the uh, these uh, attributes are you know invisibly written at the top of every program so it's assuming you want to know about this which is an unused variable and this which is dead code you know it's not a variable but it is a uh, code that uh, nobody's using so uh, it's called dead code. And there's a, uh, so if you change a uh, warn to allow, then it, uh, it tells it the, the opposite thing. It says, hey, this is, this is just fine. Uh, please don't tell me about it. And the interesting thing is uh, if you run this, uh, it's actually not going to, uh, it's not going to stop this. And uh, so it says warn unused variables on by default. And uh, so you know that makes you wonder what's uh, what's going on here, and uh, the what's going on is that there are two ways to declare attributes. There's a uh, inner and outer, and outer is without a bang, and inner is with a bang. And uh, let's see, outer is uh, so here's the uh, here's what what's important to know. So without the bang, they apply to the thing that follows the attribute. So they only apply to one. Which is, you know, uh, we've seen it uh, now. We derive debug, you know, and you know that's good to only apply to the one thing because we don't want to say, you know, just a struct two, and you know now now this one gets uh, gets debug as well. Uh, that would be uh, that would be bad. Uh, so you know, uh, it makes you uh, you know add this uh, exclamation mark if you want to apply to everything inside its uh, its area inside the program and so if you do this then now it's going to uh, going to finally be quiet and uh, by the way if you take uh, let's see take this out and put it over here then you can see uh, it's going to give the warning again because uh, we didn't tell it to allow dead code until it went into the main function and this is declared before it, so uh, you want to have it, you know, up there. And also, if you have, uh, yeah, allow dead code, just a struct two, just to uh, make the point uh, perfectly clear. You know, it's only going to apply to uh, to this one. So make sure you uh, put the bang in there if you want it to apply to everything. So. Uh, let's just look at a few. Uh, I, I haven't used every attribute, and, and you know nobody has used every attribute because they apply to very uh, specific things. But uh, one uh, one very common one is this uh, this test one. And test is really cool. This is what makes makes testing really easy in Rust. And we're going to do more testing later. But uh, just to uh, to show you how that works. So you know do thing. And the way testing works is um, if the function panics, then the test fails. And uh, if it doesn't panic, then it uh, succeeds. And if you, uh, so you can actually do cargo test and uh, you do that after you install rest, but the playground fortunately also has that. And so we can do testing in the playground and you can see test do thing. Is uh, is okay. Uh, let's see function. Let's do another one. Test function do other thing, other thing like that. And then you know if we if we test this, and you can see by the way we don't even need a main function for uh, for testing. We're just uh, you know testing the functions, 
and uh, it says okay two pass zero failed that's cool and then the the way you usually do uh, something in a in a test is you do like a, you know assert eek you know uh, I want to uh, you know eight equals eight and if eight doesn't equals doesn't equal eight then uh, I would like you to panic and um, so there you go it'll it'll write the tests or it'll run the test for you with this uh, this test attribute and then here uh, one of them is going to uh, panic because eight is not equal to nine and uh, there we go so do other thing failed and then it tells you hey left is eight right is nine they're not the same so that is a uh, so that is uh, you know pretty convenient this uh, this test attribute uh, this other one is a uh, CFG and there's a lot of CFG um, if you go down here you can see all the uh, all the types you know CFG uh, there's a lot to it and um, you know, here's one like do thing we can do do thing again and then uh, do thing over here and then uh, we can write the same you know a, a function with the same name and uh, we have this uh, CFG target OS and uh, you know if it's uh, on a Linux machine it'll run it in this way on a Windows machine it'll run it in this way and this uh, this this uh, index with uh, built-in attributes at the bottom of the uh, of this page is uh, is probably the best way to uh, to start uh, you know shopping shopping for your uh, for your favorite attributes uh, where you can see uh, you know how to use them uh, you can have CFG make your own uh, you can make your own configurations uh, run things if one function exists and uh, don't run them if another one doesn't um, you know ignore should panic this is a uh, if you're doing a test and uh, you want it to panic you you add this and uh, it'll count that as a success let's see what else I've used um, allow of course we used uh, deprecated uh, that is um, if you go into the uh, into the source documentation for uh, for wrestling you can uh, you can see a lot of stuff like this if you just do a search for the uh, the, the macro syntax you can see uh, you know it's got it's got a bunch of things here um, stable so it's telling uh, telling us that uh, that it's a or telling Rust that it's a stable feature it's not experimental uh, cold means uh, you're probably not going to use it so it's uh, it's giving a hint to the compiler to maybe um, uh, generate the uh, the uh, assembly code uh, assuming that it's not going to be used um, stable inline stable is basically uh, so the you know one of the uh, and then we have unstable of course so one uh, one way another way to get used to uh, attributes is to just like go through uh, other people's code and and look for this and then see what kind of attributes they're using uh, repr that's uh, representation this can be if you have a uh, you have a struct but you want to like call it from C and C has its own rules for struct then you can do uh, repr C uh, and then and then you have this struct that is made in a way that uh, that C is comfortable with that C can uh, can use um, you know there's there's so much stuff there's uh, there's no uh, there's no STD as well this is uh, if you don't this is good for if you have like uh, you know robotics like a uh, embedded um, if you have this little device and uh, you can't have the, the standard library because it's got like no memory uh, it's just like you know blinking lights or something then you do uh, no STD and then uh, and then you don't bring in VEC you don't bring an option you don't bring in result you just have the most basic types uh, so no STD is used a lot for that um, recursion limit that's uh, you know you you have a recursive type but you only want it to work up to like 20 times and then stop um, so anyway that's um, the uh, so for attributes uh, yeah the main thing is to uh, you know experiment yourself they're really easy to uh, to use uh, definitely go to these attributes and uh, it's like a you know big shopping list and see uh, see which one's your favorite and also look at uh, other people's code and see what they're doing and then eventually you know maybe one day you'll want to write your own 
attributes and they are really complicated but you know if you really want to write one then you'll you'll find a way to do it and there's uh there there are books online that uh that uh, like tutorials that'll that'll teach you how to do that and you can kind of follow along but that's like really really advanced rust and um for the time being the best thing is just to uh think of this as a big uh you know list of features and uh decide which ones you like best and uh, start using them